You're listening to Pro Community, a Socius podcast, the show where online community meets business performance. Welcome to episode number seven of Pro Community, the show where online community meets business performance. I'm Josh Paul. You can see all of the episodes of Pro Community at Socius.com, as well as subscribe to it as an audio podcast on iTunes for your long commute home. I'm very pleased to have with me today Joseph Porcelli, Director of Engagement Services at Gov Delivery, a really interesting firm that helps government agencies connect with the public in more expansive and valuable ways. And we're going to get into a lot of that uh, during this episode. Joseph also founded NeighborsForNeighbors.org, the nation's first neighborhood-centric urban social network. Welcome, Joseph. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Thanks for being here. So let's get right into this because there's a lot of information we want to cover. Why is government doing this? Why Why are government agencies building communities and engaging constituents in online communities? You know, I, th- I think it comes down to uh, uh, some basic needs, actually. It's, it's that there's greater demand for services, there's less resources to fund and execute those services, and people have expectations now that with social media um, that they can get access to information and help that they want in newer ways that are faster and more, um, I guess, uh, like more in line with what they expect and how they're used to. So um, tools like um, social networking or collaboration platforms for government help government achieve those three things. So, so most people are, are people are most familiar with online communities in, in the context of business or membership organizations where the, the line to sales and, and, or member retention are a lot more straightforward. Both governments really about changing a, a behavior, right? Uh, and with a massive audience, H- how's that possible? And, and did I get that right? Yeah, I, I think you, you're, you're pretty darn close. And you know, government really cares about s- some basic things, right? They want people to be safe. They want them to be healthy. Uh, they want them to have shelter. They want them to have education. Um, they want them to be able to to prosper and grow and contribute to the greater good. So, um, you know, there, there, there's lots of different tools and lots of different ways to do that. But it, something that gets lost is really what are we trying to accomplish? What matters? What is the mission and what are the mission objectives? And so uh, here at Gov Delivery and our, our social network um, that we operate called GovLoop.com, we work to help connect and empower government to execute their mission uh, effectively and efficiently. And you're not only empowering government. You know, uh, you know, people on, on different sides of, of of the issue may, you know, look at a government-sponsored online community and say, you know, I don't need more, more government. But in in talking to you and, and learning about Gov Delivery, you're really not only empowering government, but you're empowering the public. You know, a, a big part of what you do is, you know, getting people to getting the public to learn something and share it with other constituents. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. And I, I think really what it comes down to is um, uh, flirting and exploring with the role of what, 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 what can a citizen do? What, what, are, what, are the, what, what impacts can citizens make to make a difference in their daily lives and those of their neighbors, um, those they may work with, um, study with, or worship? So if we think about um, like engagement and you think about you know the typical definition, people think civic engagement means going to the polls and voting. Super important. It's great. Um, but as we're faced with dwindling resources and we're faced with increases for demand of government services, the role of citizen, in my opinion, and what we're, we're starting to see is it's increasing, right? And we have an engagement funnel, and the last um, phase of the engagement funnel we call leadership. And what we're, what we're really looking to do with these online communities is expand the role of citizen to co-create, co-organize, or act um, 
um, in part in partnership with government to take that message or to encourage people to um, change your behavior or join join the CERT program, for example, with FEMA and become an assist uh, or assist emergency responders in you know during emergencies or whenever they're needed. Um, and so that that's that it's 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 a very actually interesting and fun. Um, uh, opportunity to work on because if you think about all of the folks who volunteer uh, in the country and all of the skill and the resources that we have as citizens, there's a lot we can do. And I, I have this, um, th this uh, I call it the perimeter of community, and it's something that everyone can think about. So if you think about your community or your the immediate folks that you care about or may be in service of, you think of you know your family, right? You may think of your spouse or your immediate friends or whatever it is. But what, what, we're, what we're really working on is expanding that perimeter out past, you know, your dwelling unit, your home or your apartment or, you know, wherever you are, out to your neighbors, right? And then out past your immediate neighbors to the end of your block or to the end of your road if you live on a farm or whatever that is, right? So it's, it's, it's an exciting time because we're, we're not only seeing uh, more and more people want to take this on, they're pulling it. And there's lots of great social innovation with like open data where people are taking information that the government has and doing awesome things with it, like helping people find when the next bus is coming, which for me helps a lot. So it, 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 that, that's a, a, a long expanded answer to your question, um, but it really comes down to what else can we do together? And government really sees itself not as um, a platform, as, um, as like a solution, but a platform. It facilitates inspiring and providing people with the tools and the data to make um, contributions to improve their daily lives. So an important element in a, a successful government online community is, is to really think about it in as citizen-centric rather than government-centric. That is a very good way to put it. Yeah, you know, there's um, a, a couple projects that I've worked on, really part of the the, the internal objectives are to reduce the, the distance from what Washington thinks is important to what the community knows the impact really needs to be and bridge that gap and have there be real-time collaboration and feedback so the, 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 the knowledge is shepherded from, it's asked of the public, shepherded back inside the agency and their systems can be changed or tweaked or you know reinvented to accommodate to actually get the mission objective done based on the feedback of what the citizens say. No, actually, this is what we need. How did you get involved in, in helping state and federal <laughs> government build communities and engage the public? So let's back up a minute. Sure. Totally by accident. Um, if you asked me, I guess uh, I was uh, my last, um, like, long, my, my, my first, my last career was I was a ACT certified consultant, you know, ACT database. And um, this was back in 2004, and what happened was I was walking home, um, and I, one of my neighbors came up to me. He's like, hey, man, I just got mugged at gunpoint. I was like, what? And I saw some other guy get pistol whipped. I'm like, what? And this is just down the street from my house. I'm like, this, what? You know, I just freaked out. I'm a big guy. He was a big guy. I thought I didn't have anything to worry about, but apparently I did. So I did a bunch of research and found out that people were getting mugged walking home from the T all the time. This is the T or the Metro in, in Boston where I was living. And um, people weren't communicating. They weren't communicating with each other, and they weren't communicating with the police department. And it turned out the same couple of folks were mugging multiple people time and time again because people weren't communicating. I'm like, that's dumb, so let's do something about it. So I just started organizing events in my neighborhood, bringing neighbors together uh, where they would meet at, like, neighborhood socials. And then we started doing organizing events where neighbors would create um, uh, community service projects and social activities based on their interests, and they would stay together over time. Uh, and through that organizing, I created a problem where I actually couldn't keep up with all the interest and the enthusiasm the community showed. And this is really before the, you know, this is 2004, 2005, so we, technology hasn't, hadn't really caught up to all this interest yet, right? So um, I wound up through a number of trial and error on different platforms building this social network for the city of Boston, neighborsforneighbors.org, that connected neighbors to each other and their civil servants so they can work together. And what I really looked to do is remove myself as the bottleneck because I was willing to do the work and I was doing this for fun, um, but I, I knew that I was a limitation. So I looked at technology to facilitate that so it would be more effective, more efficient, and would increase engagement, which would mean people were safer and um, people had you know more exercise together and more volunteers to local nonprofits and the police department could reach from 
you know, thousands of people instantly to mobilize them to take action. So essentially what happened there, um, I wound up being recruited to Boston Police and worked there as a, as a community organizer for a number of years and worked on some special technology projects. I had a technology background. So I like to think of myself as um, an organizer with a technology problem. <laughs> so I just tried lots of different things there and then wound up working on uh, the Service Nation campaign, uh, which was all about service, if you remember during the last uh, election, uh, resulted in the passage of the Edward M. Kennedy Ameri Serve America Act, um, which was awesome experience. And then worked on sharing the story of Neighbors for Neighbors for about a year all around the country, telling different cities and uh, federal agencies what it is they could do with social networking. Um, and then uh, had the great fortune to work on a project for Secretary Napolitano and Commissioner Burson at CBP at the time for a social network on border affairs. And then about a year later, um, the kind of stars aligned and I got to work with my friend Steve Ressler who founded GovLoop.com and we've been supporting each other as we're both kind of in the forefront of this, um, this realm, if you will, and then joined the Gov Delivery team. And so now I not only get to work on a, you know, one or two projects, there's multiple and it's lots of fun and I, I get to work with really inspiring folks who are very committed to public service and help build these tools and platforms that really empower and bring um, government um, together to work, you know, interagency, um, but also with, with, with the public to make a difference in people's lives every day. It's awesome. It's a great story. And I think it's important that, or I think it's interesting that your background comes from building communities in communities yep. rather than coming from the enterprise 2.0 world and trying to apply it to communities. You really uh, came from solving a problem and finding yes. a solution to a problem. Yeah, it, it, that, that's a very good way to put it. And, you know, there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of online communities that come together and serve a very um, important purpose and are very good at it. Um, but there's something I remind folks all the time is that time together face to face, there's nothing like it. Right. And Scott Heffernan, um, who is the CEO of meetup.com, a friend and mentor, um, you know, he says meetup is used. Um, you know, we use meetup. Uh, we, we, we use meetup online to get together offline. And that, you know, like we you and I met face to face and we had a great conversation. I remember meeting you. And there's there's an experience that you have when you're face to face that nothing digital can ever replicate. But since we can't be together face to face and, you know, because of time or because of distance, this is the second best alternative um, that allows people to communicate and collaborate to get things done. So what role do online communities and, and sharing and, and collaboration play in how governments communicate with the public? Can you give me some examples and, and some of the overarching themes that you're seeing? Sure. So again, it really comes down to changing behaviors and it comes down to um, trying to make um, you know, the United States a better place for its citizens and, you know, for folks all around the world. So I'll share a couple ex of uh, examples with you. Um, the first one I'll share is community.fema.gov. Uh, that's a project that we're working on right now. It is the online home for the National Preparedness Coalition, and folks are using it to empower themselves to prepare, um, but also share resources and best practices so that they can influence the community that who trusts them or they have um, access to, if you will, to prepare national or to prepare or excuse me to coordinate preparedness events all around the country. So FEMA is very smart about this. They know that when people learn about preparedness at work, they take it back home with them, and they take what they've learned and they they prepare their families and they share with their neighbors and their friends and they take it um, to church if they go to church and and share it with their folks in their congregation. So there's a lot of um, good science behind it. Um, but there, there, up to this point, really hasn't been a way where FEMA can take the expansive reach that it has and through its different government partners and bring everybody together in one community where they can share their message, where the folks who have done the work before can help those who are just starting, share their knowledge, share their experiences. And what's really cool is we start to see discussions where people are like, this is really helpful. And I didn't know so many people cared about this. I didn't know that there was so much knowledge or there was so much activity. So there becomes a great sense of pride and camaraderie among the members that really motivates them and sustains them and builds upon the diversity of, of the base that's doing this. So if you talk to folks who have run volunteer programs before, the challenge is to keep bringing new folks in to kind of keep that spirit alive and to reward and acknowledge and really um, 
um, which, which unfortunately gets undermined, folks who've been committed for a really long time. So it just kind of keeps the it keeps the momentum and the inspiration uh, and the knowledge shared and brewing among everybody. Uh, so that that's one example. Uh, another one is another project we're working on is if you go to connect.mep.com. It's the manufacturing extension partnership program of NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology, and that community is being used um, by a number of different programs. And what they're what they're doing is that is um, to share what it is that each of these manufacturing extension partnership centers are doing all around the country. Uh, and they're made up of government, academic, uh, manufacturing um, uh, cohorts, and they're sharing their knowledge. Because when they share their knowledge, what works best here can also work great somewhere else. That means that there's more innovation. That means there's more demand for products, which means there's more jobs, and the economy does better. So it's really neat the way that this can be used. Um, another one of my – did you have a question there or? No, I mean, I, I like the way, uh, I mean, when you're talking about online communities in, in government, you're talking about uh, connecting it to, it's not just an online place to collaborate and share, you're connecting it to a other programs and other, yep. uh, you know, opportunities for people. Something I, I hear you talk about a lot is, you know, allowing people to work together to solve problems, but also to take advantage of opportunities. So there's an awareness building uh, component in here to offline um, and other online programs. Yeah, so like, you know, FEMA, it's all about helping people prepare so we're safer and we're more resilient. MEP is about increasing innovation, jobs, and boosting the economy. So they're very serious, very important programs that government's using technology, technology to do this. One thing I do want to underscore too, it's it's not just about you know the platform. There are lots of great platforms out there, um, but it really has a lot to do with the strategy. And is the strategy aligned with um, you know real world um, like environments? Right? Do people really want to do this? Right, is there problems? Right? What do people care about? How do we motivate them? Um, and so those are all really important questions to ask. So I just wanted to underscore that for a second. And that has to be built into the strategy, has to be built into the tone of how the community is managed. And it has to be something that community members experience and are proud of, or at least they're aware that this is how things are working, because that creates workability within the community itself. So, no, I, I agree. We always say that technology is, or the, the platform is, it's really about 50% of the equation. There's a lot more that goes into it to make it a successful, thriving community that, that helps people solve the right problems. That's right. And uh, I just want to underscore, uh, again, that, that awareness building of taking advantage of opportunities is, through social sharing. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any examples of that happening in, in the wild? Well, I, I, can, I have a, actually a great example. Um, there's something, a uh, community called Navy for Moms. And a friend of mine runs that community, and it's really cool. The problem was the Navy was having a hard time recruiting folks uh, to join the Navy, and they found out that moms were the biggest barrier for people to join. So the Navy did something really spectacularly cool. They created a community that is run by and governed by moms, and the Navy can't actually um, in, intervene or, like, put information there. So the moms are actually communicating, here's my experience, here's what happened, and it's so authentic, and the moms actually talk to each other online and offline that um, recruiting was actually increased, and they were able to bring in uh, more folks to participate in the work that um, you know Army does for the number of uh, positions that they had available. So it was a very progressive, very very cool way to solve a problem um, that the Navy needed to deal with. So that's a that's a great example, and it also highlights what you just said about strategy and the importance of the, right. the, the platform, you know, they, they probably selected the right platform, mm -hmm. but that wouldn't have been successful without that, that strategic thinking and that you know, creativity in the case of uh, Navy for Moms. Absolutely. And again, it relies on like the passion of the community. I think, you know, the community members, community members, communi people are not a commodity, right? And if you begin to treat them as a commodity, like they're just going to do this action thing for us, it's just not going to work. And if it does work, it'll happen very for just a very short period of time, and then it won't. You really need to respect, you need to trust, and you need to um, treat your community members as leaders and co-facilitators. They have to be seen that way, and they need to see each other that way. More important, so I, I agree. 
So let's get into some of the biggest challenges that government agencies have in building online communities. Okay. What are you seeing out there? So um, the biggest thing for government is there's a lot of policy out there. Uh, and it's it's taken a number of years to make progress here. But um, the biggest one is the the communities need to meet their privacy standards, which are pretty darn stringent, along with their security standards. So um, Gov Delivery and our collaboration solution, we meet all those requirements. So government can actually use our software, if you will, our SaaS software. So that that's probably one of the one of the bigger challenges. And then you need to have like terms of service agreements for some of the social software, which are they're caught up to speed and they've, they've you can actually go to howto.gov if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, and there's lots of great information about that, but those are some of the challenges. And then it's the same challenges that many organizations, you know, face. What are we supposed to do? I want 100,000 followers. Why? I don't know, because I do. If that's your strategy, you're, you're, you're not going to get there. And if you do, your followers are going to have a horrible experience and that's not going to work out for anybody. And that piece so of it some of the same challenges that everybody else faces. That makes sense. And that, that piece translates to what we see in, in the for-profit and right. uh, association and, and user group world. You know, if, if a, yep. an executive comes back from a conference and says, we need an online community, that's a red flag right there. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked in terms of what are we trying to solve for our customers, what are we trying to solve for our organization. Mm-hmm. Can, can you talk uh, for a second about some successful approaches to adoption and growing the community we've you know we've covered why collaboration and building community is important why engaging the public is important some of the risks that uh, and challenges that people face so you have the community what are some tips for growing the community and, and building adoption sure I mean I would say the first thing is the community needs to see itself as leadership right as leaders so when folks see themselves leading they feel proud they know that there's results and there's accountability there, and so folks will share and tell their um, tell other folks who might be interested to join, and that I think is very effective. You need to have sort of that authenticity there. Um, the other thing that um, we have as an organization that has been very effective is we have a service called Outreach Acceleration. Um, so Gov Delivery, the Gov Delivery collaboration solution is one of our three products. Another product is called the Digital Communication Management product which is how government uses to reach, what government uses to reach the public. So there are over 35 million subscribers uh, to this uh, platform. They receive email and text-based communication, and it manages all the metrics and the social sharing for um, you know, these agencies. So because government's mission is so aligned, we can help facilitate partnerships and execute communication campaigns on behalf of one agency with another, which can drive um, membership uh, very quickly um, to online communities or um, email subscriptions for another agency because we know that there are you know three million subscribers who are interested in this particular topic. So it's a really powerful and efficient, effective way for the government to get the for agencies to get the word out through their partners to folks who have already said they're interested in preparedness or emergencies or disasters in FEMA's case, for example. You bring up a good point. Why, why is it so important to build on what the community has already done or what the agency has in place, the relationships they have with other mm-hmm. parts of government and the outreach that they've already done with the public? Why is that important in building an online community? Sure. I mean, I think there's a couple of things here. And what I care about as a citizen, I'm going to step out on my role here, is you know, I really do want government to be effective and very efficient. And so... Um, if there's someone out there that's interested in, you know, uh, they run a neighborhood association or they're, you know, a pastor at a church or they're responsible for, you know, emergency preparedness at work, this individual or the, that group of individuals is looking for government to tell them what to do. Like, how do I do this? I'm not sure. I need your help. So if we think about having an online community where government can reach these folks or being able to communicate out to them, Imagine all the, the money and time that can be saved by program coordinators or program managers if there's one place to go where there are folks who said, yes, hello, I, I, I want to take this. I'll take these actions. You just need to tell me what to do. So, you know, if there's 10 programs that can serve one person and they're one, in one place, that's a ton of savings for government. They can put the money 
into the programs you know that that need additional funding to deliver the services uh, to the citizens I think that that makes sense what um, let's talk for a second about employees of the government and, and employees yeah. of, of certain agencies how does strengthening the connections between the agency and the public benefit government employees and, and the agencies that they work for so we've talked about how it helps the public how yeah. does it help the agency and the people who run the agency well i'll tell you one of the most satisfying parts of my job is you know the the, the folks that work in government are really committed and passionate about the work that they do and it's hard and they're typically has been a lot of bureaucracy and it's it's hard for them to really move the needle in the programs where they've been working really hard and are passionate about it's wonderful to see like a client see like the community just taking off and people having a very positive experience and thanking each other and and giving the giving the agency good feedback I think it's a huge morale booster right it's like finally they can it, it really helps them execute um, on their on on their mission and in their particular program so it's a morale booster, and I think it also um, helps create um, a, a further sense of meaning and value in their job, right? Folks who are working in government chose to be in government because they really want to serve the public, and our, and our software helps reach the public and helps the public work together on behalf of government to get stuff done. So, and I think that's, I mean, there isn't a technology or, or an initiative or strategy out there that can be a, a game changer the way that an online community can be a game changer both for the organization the people who run the organization as well as the customers you know putting in a new email marketing system is not going to change the game but building a community and just the the potential it has for current initiatives and future initiatives is unparalleled yeah i think that it's definitely a mix of tools right you need to be able to reach the public. You need to be able to have a place for the community to, to realize and work together and kind of act on your behalf. And, you know, I, I, I think things are coming together and it's a very exciting time for government and for citizens to be able to accelerate and to do, to execute on their mission effectively and efficiently. So if I'm a, you know, if I'm the head of a, a government agency or the head of technology for a, a state agency or federal agency, what kind of return on investment metrics can I expect? Um, you know, that's a that's a great question. You know, I, there there's simple there's some simple things like if you digitize, if you don't have to send out paper statements for your utility bills, or you don't have to send out paper statements for certain notifications, what how much money can you save? And I have done I have like a calculator that I actually use, and it's it's unbelievably it's awesome how much money they can save converting from paper to digital. That's just like straight numbers. You can just do the math, right? Um, the other thing is, you know, I think there's a return on investment around expectations. Citizens expect government to be able to communicate with them, you know, when they need to be communicated with, right? If there's a tornado coming, I want to know that there's a tornado coming. That's your job. Tell me when it's coming. So when people are notified, they feel like, great, government has done their job. So there's around those expectations, which are important. Um, and then I would also say that, you know, it really comes down to the mission objectives again. Are we making people safe? Are more people healthy? Are people getting their flu shot, for example, right? Um, do students who are looking to go to school get access to uh, apply to loans and get the information they need? Like that is a return on investment. So if you can show that, you know, 10% more students applied for a particular loan, you know that's a huge return on investment because typically the costs associated with those increments have been very high, right? And often it, the costs go down, but the value goes up when you use digital technologies to communicate and collaborate with the public. I think that really hits home just the importance of maximizing engagement. Absolutely. You know, um, and, and it's not a, a one-time campaign. It's not nope. a one-time uh, strategy. It evolves over time. The more you learn about how your public would like to engage, mm -hmm. um, the the your the, the community strategy for the agency evolves as well that's right it's an ongoing process and you know there's a lot of talk about sort of the social business and it, this is really we're, we're seeing this and it's 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 awesomely powerful it's producing great results um, and I think it's definitely raising the bar on service level on motivation on um, on on pride of service if you will for the government so it's it's very cool now 
consumer engagement over social channels really influences the way that constituents expect to interact with government. Yes. What talk about some of the risks that government runs if they don't engage their community. Sure. I mean, first of all, the conversation's already happening. And I, I would say some of the biggest risks that government um, needs to mitigate is that misinformation, right? Folks hear things, they start tweeting things, it's all over Facebook. It may or may not be accurate. And, and when it comes to safety or health, government really needs to make sure that that information is accurate and it needs to participate in those channels and interact with folks uh, in a way that provides a clear message uh, but also builds trust, right? Because if you want folks to interact on your behalf, you need to have trust. You also need to be human. So um, TSA has a heck of a job doing this. And if you look at um, blog.tsa.gov, you'll see that they use humor, they use facts, and they've got, they've, they've, they have just a terrific job uh, uh, and so much that they have to deal with every day. Uh, but I think they do it pretty well over there. Um, and their team um, certainly mitigates those risks in a very effective way. Um, and I, I know the folks over there. I have nothing but the utmost respect for what they get done every day for the public. So, so do you recommend that an agency who's looking at uh, engaging the public uh, in a in a more expansive way, do you recommend a wholesale change in the way that they do business? Or are there some small steps that agencies can take to uh, build community? Yeah, you know, I would say that, um, you know, there are small steps you can take. And if you look at, you know, what, what, what we recommend folks is if, if you're not using, you know, an outbound system like Gov Delivery Digital Communication Management uh, to reach the public, um, there, I, I wouldn't look at that in terms of, um, you know, what you're going to get, but what you're going to save, right? You're going to reach, you know, we, we have um, some, some agencies that, like the state of Indiana, for example, has I think something like 1.3 million subscribers. It's 15% of the population or something like that. That's awesome. They can reach so many people so quickly and get the information out, which is really fantastic. Um, but for an agency that's, that's just looking to get in the game, there's just so much money that they can save. And communication really is the backbone of the operation if you're dealing with citizens. Citizens want information. You can change their behavior. You can offer them value. Um, and with some of the automation that our system has, um, for, I think the biggest fear that agencies have is, you know, how many hours is this going to take? How many people we have to sign to this? But we have automation built into the system that's, that watches web pages for changes and automatically kicks out an alert, right? And there, there's all kinds of great efficiencies in that so that it will save the money. You can reach more people and save money at the same time. So That's outstanding. So it really the, you know, it takes the government out of the software business and puts them in the people business where, where they should be. Yep. So you're you know, a rising star in, in the Washington, uh, D.C. area, and you're, you're a, a, often asked to speak to an agency about um, how they can increase engagement. If you're speaking to a room full of government uh, employees, government uh, officials, high-ranking people in, in federal and state agencies, Mm. about how to build community and how to engage the public. What is the one takeaway you'd want them to leave the room with? Um, it's a great question. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it into two parts. I'm going to cheat. So the first part of the one takeaway, I would really say is, you know, you don't have to solve world peace at one thing. You can take a step and you can start with a pilot and see how it goes and, and, and learn from that. And those are very important wins. And I think we're, we're sometimes we think too big and we need to just start with something that's digestible that we have time to do that we can sort of do a proof of concept, if you will. And the second part of the my one answer to your question would be is really focus on what what it is the community um, wants and needs and build that into your plan. That shouldn't be what you ask afterwards. Those should be the first questions you start with. Well, Joseph, I really appreciate your time today and giving this, us this well-rounded view of some of the strategies that uh, government can use to engage the public. Uh, um, before we go, where can people find you on the web? Sure. Um, so you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Joseph Porcelli. My last name is spelled P-O-R-C-E-L-L-I. 
Uh, you can also find me blogging on reachthepublic.com, which is our company blog, and I also blog at josephporcelli.com. Great. For people who are interested in Neighbors for Neighbors, is that still expanding, or is it uh, really just in the Massachusetts area? So it's just just, just in the Boston area, okay. and it's neighborsfornneighbors.org, and it's F-O-R, and there are neighbors, both neighbors have an S on the end. Great. Well, as always, you can see all of the episodes of Pro Community at socius.com. You can also subscribe to the show on iTunes, where five-star ratings and great reviews are appreciated if you like what you heard today. Joseph, again, I want to thank you again. Uh, thank you for your time today, and have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, and thanks for letting me tell the story about all the awesome work folks are doing in government. Really appreciate it. Keep it up. It's really exciting. Thank you. Thank you.